What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you an updated guide about runes, okay? I'm bringing you an updated guide about runes, how to get them, where's the best place to farm them, and how to use the brand new upgrade system with the runes over at the jeweler, and why trying to get certain mythic uniques is a little bit different this season, and I've been getting a lot of questions in my community about this, so I'm here to explain it all so that way you guys can really get a good understanding of how all this works and so you don't waste your resplendent sparks as well so let's get right into it so the runes themselves let's talk about the runes okay so the runes themselves as you guys all know i still think that the runes are a little bit underwhelming but i still think it's a really really cool system and i hope that it improves over time with that said the runes are these magical runes that we can add into our characters to make give us more abilities like the barbarians war cry for example or the druids earth and bulwark to give myself a barrier there's also really cool things you could do to help reduce ultimates you know increase you know spearborn's concussive stomp increase your critical strike restore primary resource a lot of these really really cool things now the runes themselves are very simple uh, to use and understand. You just add two different runes together, okay? You're going to have your ones that give you offering, like this POC one. So I gain five offering every time I spend 5% of my max resource. And then you're going to have the runes of evocation where it requires like 250 of my offering to actually invoke the concussive stomp here. So the basis of the runes is pretty straightforward in, uh, you know how you use those. It does require two slots. So you can have two different runes equipped at the same time, as you can see here with my character. Now, with that said, where do you get runes? Where can you find them? And where's the best places to farm them? So first of all, just like most items in the game, you can find them in any piece of content. So you can find them all over the overworld. You can find them in nightmare dungeons. You can find them in infernal hordes. You can find them when you do bosses. You can find them in the open world when you're doing hell tides and chests pretty much everywhere now with that said there is a few places that are by far the best ones to actually farm them at so a few of them are going to be your bosses okay so bosses and doing boss materials like doing boss runs is one of the best places to actually get them if you're doing like durial and dariel you know zur any of these these major bosses they pretty much drop one every single time you beat them now with that said, even though you are getting one rune, it is completely random. Not only which one you get, but which level that you get. So you could get a magic one, you could get a rare one, or you could get a legendary. It is completely random, and it's only one. So if you are on like a huge boss run, like, you know, you got like 100 Durial runs in a row, and you're just going to, you know, blast through them. Then yeah, then the getting runes that way is a very solid method because not only are you getting your runes, but you're you know you're getting a bunch of items that you could sell and racking up money, and then you of course you're getting a chance for your mythic uniques. So boss runs, super super good. All right, the next and best place in my opinion to get runes is the Undercity. Okay, the Undercity is by design the best place to come over here and get them at the Spirit Brazier, okay? So the Undercity is found inside of the, uh, what does that say? The, was that Harass? Or Karas Bazaar, all right? So it's here that you can find this. It's in the brand new city in Nahantu. All right, you can come into the Undercity and you can just start it right away. You don't even have to use any of the offerings and stuff. We'll talk about that in another video. But by design, the Undercity is the best place to farm these. They have an increased drop rate, and it's only found inside the Undercity. It's kind of similar to how, like, even though to me it feels like the Mythic drop rate is lower this season, or it feels that way. Maybe it's only because of the amount of items that you get from, you know, during a Durial run, because it's only three, maybe four. But, like, Durial and Dariel still have the highest percentage or any other bosses actually, like the bosses have the best percentage for you to get mythic uniques, but anywhere else is just kind of less. You can still get them, but it's less. It's similar to the Undercity. The Undercity has the best drop rate for any of the runes that you're looking for. Again, completely random, but this is the best place to farm them. So one thing that makes them so unique is using these different um, tributes that you can add in to modify the 
aspect and rewards, or excuse, excuse me, the affixes and the rewards of the drops in the Undercity. So the better ones that you're running, whether it's rare or legendary, gives you better odds of getting certain runes in the game. So the Undercity by far is the best, okay? So now, why is it important to have runes? All right, not only do they really increase our power level with our characters, at least to some degree, I know there's they've kind of nerfed a lot of the damage ones, but you do get a very nice damage buff from the runes or a quality of life utility buff from the runes. Like, I'm using the one where, like, I get Barbarian's War Cry, increasing my damage dealt by 15%. Pretty much every class is going to, or every class and every build is going to use Call to Arms for this. Like, this, it's kind of silly not to. Um, and then I have this one where it's like, this gives me a barrier, which makes my character just survive and just be one of the toughest characters in the game, right? So there's a lot of utility here, but why is it important to farm up these, okay? So if you guys don't know, they changed how we get our resplendent sparks in the season, okay? So before we used to get our resplendent sparks, right? You see, I have one. We used to get them a few different ways. One was defeating Uber Lilith for the first time each season. That is no longer here. Defeating a level 200 boss. That is gone because level 200 bosses are gone because the boss levels not only are, you know, what what is it like, changed to your level, but it's also dependent on the, you like, um, Le like world level that you're playing at so for example like the boss that i go fight on torment 3 is stronger than the boss that i fight on torment 1 right so it's all scaled to not only my character level but the actual difficulty of the game like the like if i'm playing on hard or torment whatever it is so there's no more level 200 bosses um and it's all scaled to what your character level is so now we can still get those it's very very cool so now you can no longer get it at level 200, right? So both of those are gone. So that was two before, all right? Then at the seasonal journey, or not the seasonal journey, but the seasonal like square that you would do, that's over here. I'll come show you guys in the new Zabernats. So each season, as you guys know, we get a little seasonal theme or like a seasonal quest um, like board. And once we fill it up, we typically would get a resplendent spark at the end. As you can see here on the scale, we come in here to do the remnants. So we, can, we do get this last one that gives us a bunch of ancestral legendaries and uniques, but we no longer get a resplendent spark here. We used to get one at the end of these each season. That is also gone because before it did cost four to, to make a mythic unique. Now that's no longer the case. So if we go back, so now there's two different ways to actually make a mythic unique, and this is where runes come in because it's so important. First and foremost, you can come over to the blacksmith and you can come over to uh, forge equipment and you can come to mythic uniques and you can make a mythic unique cache. However, this cache requires two resplendent sparks, as you see, as well as 50 million gold. All right. Now, this is a random, randomly crafted mythic unique. So this is completely random. If you want to just take two of your Mythic Uniques, break them down for Sparks, and then randomly try to get one of the new ones or one of the Mythic Uniques that are in the game, it'll give it to you. It is completely random. I highly suggest that you do not do this. So the new way that the devs came up with was that we could come over here to the Jeweler and we could do Rune Crafting. All right? So Mythic Uniques are here, and you can actually target the particular gear piece that you want. So for my Quill Volley build, I really need Tyrael's Might. It has not dropped for me. I've gotten two or three other Mythic Uniques, and I have not gotten this yet. So I could craft it. However, I need two Resplendent Sparks, six Lilth Legendary uh, um, runes, six Feo Legendary runes, and then six Tech, which is, I believe, the Magic runes or the Rare runes. And then I can craft this, and it's even better because it only costs 5,000 gold. So this is by far the best way, and each of the runes change based on the legendary that you're trying to make. So the more that you farm these runes, the easier it is to actually salvage Mythic Uniques that you got in order to get the one that you need. Now, the first Resplendent Spark that I have, this Resplendent Spark came from completing your seasonal journey. 
In the seasonal journey cache, the very last one, you get the destroyer cache, and this gives you a resplendent spark. This is the only way to get a resplendent spark outside of just farming bosses or playing the game and getting a mythic unique to drop. This is the only other way. So you're guaranteed one spark every single season, at least going forward until they change it to get a spark. And then all you have to do is find another one like I have here. I got two here. It's the two staffs. It looks like I only got two. So the two staffs here. And then that's then it just takes me to break down one other one. And then that's it. That's all I can do. And then I just got to get the runes to actually craft it. That's why I have some of these highlighted here. So I got the Feo rune, so I got six of those. I only have two of the Lilth. I need four more, which is really hard to get. And then I believe the last rune, if I'm not mistaken, is right here. And that's the tech, which I do have seven, so I have plenty. Now, what is very cool is as you're farming these runes, because they are completely random, is that you can come over here to the jeweler and do rune crafting. Okay, so I'm going to grab a, just a set of runes just so you guys can see this. I'm going to do this live on here. So let's go ahead and grab Yaks by drinking a potion. That's a good one. So you can come over here to the rune crafting section and you can reforge these. So what it means is, is that I can trade in three of this rune in hopes of either getting a magic rune with the same level, so blue, or a 15% chance to get a rare glyph, which means yellow. So if we come over here to reforge magic runes of evocation, you can see I have two in here and you can see that I have an 85% chance to get a random magic quality rune or a 15% chance to upgrade and get a rare rune. So let's go ahead and do this live since I have plenty. Okay. Oh, actually, hold on. That's ton. Which one's this? Yaks. Uh, do I not have enough on yaks? That's ton. Did I pick the wrong one? Yeah, here we go. Yaks. There we go. So let's take Yaks. I can make four of them. Let's trade it. So I did get a Xan rune, so I got another magic one. Let's try one more time. Another magic rune. I got another tech, which is interesting. So we're going to try it one more time just to see. Nope, still. So you can see that upgrading or trying to reforge them gives you a chance to get more runes. And then the more runes you get, you could just keep trying to upgrade these. Now, what's really cool is that when you come over here to the legendary ones, you get a 100% chance to get legendary. So no matter what, when you trade in three legendaries, you get another legendary. So the more legendary runes you get, the more that you can try to re-roll them into a rune that you actually need. Like for me, I need the Lil Throne. So I really hope that I can get these and trade in some other ones. So if there is legendary runes that you don't need, like if I didn't need Xan at all, I could just trade these three in and hope I get a Lilith rune or a Lilith rune. So, yeah, guys, that's how you break down runes. That's why they're so important. That's why, like, they've changed exactly how you're going to get mythic techniques. And I kind of wanted to go over just some of the ways to really farm these out and try to make the most of your runes this season. Another big thing is, is that in the marketplace, which we'll have a separate video on, the runes are highly, highly tradable. And they, they, you can trade them, and, they're, and they sell like crazy. Like, the Lilith runes are selling for hundreds and hundreds of millions of gold. So the legendary runes just sell and fly off the shelves. So, But runes are very, very important, guys. So go farm the Undercity. Get as many as you can, and then sell them, trade them, reforge them, and get as many Mythics as you can this season. Like the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let's just get this over 50 likes. Let's spread the word on this. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think, if you guys have any other strategies, etc., to really improve your rune farming um, in Season 6 of Diablo 4. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.